Hello, this is Greg Deckler for Enterprise DNA. In today's video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics, and that is measure totals and matrix and table visualizations. Uh, and as you can see on the screen here, uh, this is the idea is to provide some options for making uh, totals work a little easier um, when you have semi-additive measures and that sort of thing. As you can see, we're actually sitting at uh, the, the 63rd top idea. Um, so the goal is to get this in the 50s. Um, but regardless, today we're actually going to be fixing uh, table measure totals in table and matrix visuals using Deneb. Um, now, if you're not familiar with Deneb, Deneb is a custom visual for Power BI. It uses the uh, Vega Lite and Vega programming language. And as you can see here, it, there's all kinds of really cool video or visuals that you can create with Deneb. I mean, just Look at all of the examples they have here on the on the on the vega.github.io page, right? There's just a ton of them, um, and people have done some really fantastic visuals with uh, Vega and Vega Lite. It's you know, it's I highly recommend uh, learning it, um, even if you know after today you're like, well, Greg, you know, using Deneb and Vega Vega Lite is you know for measure totals in table and matrix visuals is sort of like you know smack an attack with a sledgehammer, and that, that may be true, but I think if you you stick with me on this. You're going to learn a few things uh, about the NEB um, and how to work with the NEB uh, just in general. Regardless, that'll come in handy regardless of whether you're fixing uh, measure totals or, or not in table and matrix visuals. Um, so let's get on to it. Uh, what I've done here, and let's just uh, I'll give you a brief overview. Uh, here's my Deneb custom visual. And the way you get this right is you go and say get more visuals. And then you search for Deneb. And then you can click on the neb. It's a pass up here. And then you can just add it right to your, just like any other custom visual. Now, you can also download the sample PBX file, which is what I'm going to be using uh, in my demo today uh, for table matrix uh, visuals in the neb. So that's how you get it. And that's how you get it installed. Very simple. And then you can start creating visuals with it. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to start with uh, my table. Now, I did a a presentation on Microsoft Hates Greg, my YouTube channel, um, about fixing measure totals with table and matrix visuals. But the, I would call those a very early alpha uh, releases. I've really refined uh, the table and matrix visuals in Deneb since then uh, to do to function much, much better. There are definitely issues with the way I was doing it before. Um, but here on the left, I have my Deneb visual and I have my totals here at the top. And then over here, I have a Power BI table, which has the same information in it with totals and all of that. So to get started with the NEB, uh, what you do is you put it on the page. You have to add in you know, your fields that you're going to work with. And you can see here I have an index. I have my sum of my beak depth, sum of my beak length. I'm using the penguins table, uh, body mass, flipper length. And then my measure, and my measure is a is a is a non-additive measure, right? It's my classic example of sum up something and then minus two, right? And that's it's going to wreak havoc on Power BI uh, uh, totals down here because this is the sum of all of the rows, and then it subtracts two, whereas each of the individual rows is already subtracting two. So this is not the total one would expect as far as the sum of the rows. Um, it's much much higher than it should be if you just sum the rows. So that is the classic measure total issue, right? So we can fix that in the NEB though. Um, and so the way you do this is once you add in your, whatever you wanna include in your table, right? You can go ahead and say edit. And it's gonna come up here. Okay, so now what you're seeing here, I'll expand this a little bit. So down here and below, you see, actually see the data um, and that's what's coming for. So the data set right here, this data, name data set works very similar to R and Python visuals, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but uh, you can see that I have, you know, includes, I can actually see and visualize and see what, what the data set, what I'm working with in the data, uh, which is really nice little feature. And then this shows me a preview of my visual. And then over here is my language specification. My visual, my specification in the Vega Lite uh, programming language in, the way the NEB does that is that it's actually in JSON format. So you kind of program in JSON format. And this is what defines whatever appears over here as far as my visual. So 
essentially what you have is you have I have my data set, right? And then what you have is a, a series of layers. Um, so you can stack layers on top of layers, right? As you uh, build up your visual. And so I actually have uh, two layers within this visual here. I have the one that displays my table, and then I have another layer that displays my, my totals up here in in Firebrick Red. So what I need, so to get get this going, basically. What I have here is I have a transform, and I got this code from the basics of this code actually come from, well, if I can get to the right page, actually come from uh, Michael Deegan. So Michael Deegan, Vegalite table using text marks. And so this is where I got the basics of how to create a table, kind of copied this code and started modifying it. Um, as far as the way he it's working here. So just a little bit of I didn't want to didn't want to leave out Michael Deegan. Very much appreciative. And that's just how I kind of learned things, uh, to be quite honest. I just start uh start doing things and doing what I want to do and, and just start Googling around or binging around and trying to find relevant information. So I stumbled across Michael Deegan's Deegan's uh table, and that's what the basis of this is. So I'm not going to get you know super in depth into the code, um, but I do have a, like a calculate statement, and the, and the whole key to this one is the fold statement here. Um, so this allows me to essentially, and you can actually see the, what the fold statement does. So you can see here data data zero, and then data one, and then if I go to data two, right? So this is kind of the fold where it puts it into this kind of format where it sums it, everything up. Um, with my, you know, my measure, my beak length, my beak depth, and all of that. That's kind of what the fold operation more, more or less does. Um, so that's just the transformation. And I have this calculate here, um, where basically all this is here is to format my measure so that I get it into a, you know, one decimal place format. That's what this is doing. Okay, so that's the transformation. So that's when I'm transforming my data, and then I have a mark. Here. So I'm saying it's I'm only I'm gonna use a text mark versus you know something like a line or or a column or something like of uh, those of that nature, right? I'm gonna use text because I'm displaying these are all gonna be text, you know, essentially as far as vague is concerned, these are just text that it's gonna print, you know, within my visual. Um, and then I have my encoding. So my Y is again because I'm using the fold, I have my Y, which is gonna define my rows, and then my X uh, defines my columns across here and then my text is uh basically it's just a you know the field value so it's this guy right so it's what's going to print out in in all of these um so that is basically that is what forms this table right here okay so the bet the beak depth beak length that all comes from this definition or sorry this definition right here maybe i can zoom in on it for you maybe not there we go and again, so you know, when you do the fold operation, it creates a field called key um, that you can use, and that be, that holds, you know, you're basically what I'm using for my columns. And then when you also when you also fold, it creates a another field called value that you can use as along with row num and all of that sort of thing. So that's essentially what's going on here. Um, and my text, obviously, I'm binding it to my my value field, so that's what it's going to print out. So pretty simple once you uh, once you understand, you know, this is really, you know, to create a table in Vega Lite, this is all that's really required. Um, and then to get totals, essentially, you're going to do a set, more or less the same thing. I don't have to do my calculate here because I can do my format within my down when I actually display it. Um, but again, I have my fold operation to transform it. And I have this filter in here. This filter is finite datum value because I don't want to display totals for text. If I didn't have this here, I would get not I would get a you know capital N lowercase a capital N for not a number, um, and I don't want to I don't want to see those. So I use this filter function to find you know is finite datum value to basically filter those out. Okay, so then again to find my mark, I define it as fire brick red as far as my color. It's a text mark. I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to use a Y minus 25 to push it up above the visual. This my main visual, if you will. And then my encoding, I'm going to say, OK, field key axis orient top. And then my it's a text. And then my, I'm going to use an aggregation for the sum. So, right, so I'm going to sum the rows 
in this case, really sum the rows, uh, unlike table visualizations in Power BI. And I'm using my field value, and I do a format of two decimal places. Okay. So again, my X, I'm feeding this X in here so that I get my columns, right? So that the value that gets gets displayed. This is the beak depth total. This is the beak length total. This is the body mass total, flipper length total, and then my measure total, which you can see 5177.7 is much lower than what we had in our table table visualization in Power BI. And if you do the math on it, yes, it indeed sums the rows that are in this table. So it is the quote unquote correct uh, table, if you will. Okay, so that's how you create a table and it's pretty, you know, I think it's fairly straightforward. It's going to take you, if you've never worked with a uh, Vega Lite before, it's going to take you some time to to understand the syntax and the coding and stuff. But really, I mean, I, I spent a few hours, you know, maybe five, six hours, and I was able to get, you know, the kind of results that I wanted to with this. And that was literally starting from scratch, from zero uh, with uh, with Vega. And there's some other panels here. I'm like, this isn't really a Deneb um, tutorial or anything, but you have a configuration where you can kind of define global settings for things. Um, and there's also the settings of whether you want to use Vega Lite or Vega, Canvas or SVG, things like that. Okay, so that's table. Again, I think it's fairly straightforward. Um, now, one of the cool things is that this table scrolls, right? And that was my original one didn't. I had a comment on my YouTube channel from a, an individual um, who said, hey, you, you need to use a step um, and you can get a scrollable, uh, you know, visual. And so this is actually pretty important because uh, before I was limiting the rows that was being returned so they'd all fit on the page. But if you use this height and then step colon 40, then you creates a, and this really controls the height of my rows essentially. So let's say I would to, let's say I have that and then I re-render this visual, should shrink everything up. So now everything's shrunk up, right? So skinny rows and, you know, so that, basically it turns it into a scrollable visual where I can just scroll through it, which is really, really cool. Didn't know that Vega could do that. Um, and it turned out, I thought it was gonna be a lot more complex, but it turned out not to be. Uh, the only thing I really could, am still trying to figure out with a uh, table and matrix visuals is having banded rows. Um, and I don't know, I'll have to figure that one out, um, but it really wasn't important for, the, for this video presentation. So now if I go back to my report, so now I've got my skinnier rows, and here's my table visual where I can just scroll right through all of the values and I have my correct totals. So 5177.7 versus 5863.7. So there you go. That's a correct total. This is not the correct total. All right, so on to matrix visuals. And this is where I learned a really some really interesting things. Um, and I actually solved uh, two problems. So here is a matrix in Power BI uh, with uh, incorrect totals, if you will. Uh, for my matrix uh, visuals, my matrix. Uh, and you can see that like 2768.3 versus 2764.3. And if you add these together, it's really 2764.3. You add these together, it's really 2764.3 is what should be here is if you're summing the rows, if you will. Um, these work out just fine because there's only one value in, it, in them. And you can see again, this total is two off because I have two values here. And then this one is also two off so I have two values here, so it's only subtracting two up here, whereas it should be subtracting four. Um, and then this one's correct because there's only one 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 item, if you will. Um, now you can also see down here. I also solved another problem, which was the classic problem of okay, I take my measure and or my matrix, and I add another measure to it, and now I get that same column repeated all across. When all I really want to do is just add a total column to the end. Now, again, I have a uh, Allen the Quick Measure Gallery on community.powerbi.com. I have a solution for this. It's really ugly. Um, it's called the New Hotness um, Custom Table Hierarchy, basically. Um, it's really, really ugly to get around this problem uh, with just straight up Power BI. But in Vega, it's it's actually really kind of nice. And you notice that this, uh, it also makes, like if I go and shrink this down, right, it just, you know, it just doesn't behave very well. And I lose my columns and things like that. Versus with Vega, if I could select it, there we go. I mean, if I resize this visual, right, it resizes dynamically, responsibly, right? So it's really kind of nice um, in that regard. 
all right, so how do you, how do we create this? Um, now, if you notice, again, I have my index, my island species measure, beak depth, body mass. This index field, particularly for this uh, implementation of a matrix, is highly important. Not as important for the table visualization, um, but super important for this. Um, and the reason is, again, back to that data set, and I said it worked similarly to uh, R and Python visuals. If you remember, R and Python visuals, they always give you that warning that, hey, this data set has been deduplicated. Well, the same is true for Deneb. I found this out kind of the hard way and, and playing with it. I happened to have two penguins that had the same body mass and same beak depth that were on the same island, right? And I didn't have index in there. And I noticed that the, you know it was only in there one time uh, where it should have been in there two as two rows. Um, so that was a problem. Uh, so the way to solve that is you create an index and you put that index into Deneb. You don't ever have to use it. It just has to be there to make this information, this data set, you know, uh, unique. Each row is unique. And no, the row does not make it unique. That's kind of added by Deneb, if you will. Um, the second problem that I ran into with this is if you notice my measure, you know, this is all the rows from my data set. Um, you know, I have all of them listed out here. And my measure is already pre-calculated, so it's already subtracting two. So here's my beak depth, 18.7, and you can see this is 16.7, et cetera. This is null, so that's negative two. So my measure has already been calculated at the row level. And this is this is problematic uh, if you're trying to then sum it um, you know, within a matrix kind of visual. It, they, you don't get the right numbers. They don't work out. So the way to solve that is you basically have to kind of recreate your measure. So I'm not actually using my measure uh, within this visual. And in fact, what I'm doing is I'm actually handling and calculating the measure in my transform statement. So my transform statement, I can do an aggregate, I do a sum, I sum the beak depth um, as sum underscore BD, I group it by island and species, because I have island and species, right? This is the island, this is the species. And then I then have a calculate statement where I take that date, that sum BD, I subtract two, and I, I'm calling it X measure in this case. So you basically kind of have to recreate your measure calculation within the NEB, uh, in, at least in this case, as far as this matrix uh, visualization, because I have this non-additive measure. Um, and this is the way I found I found to solve that problem, because my measures are already being pre-calculated at the row level. So if I just tried to sum this up, I really wouldn't get the right answers in these different cells. So instead, we just re kind of recreate our measure calculation within the NEB. Um, all right, so then the in this rectangle, we're going to skip past this, really. Um, this is the layer. I was trying to solve banded rows, um, but regardless, it's the same transform I did in each one of these. And I had to do it in each layer. Uh, because I needed I needed a different aggregation when it came to body, average body mass. Uh, I needed a different transform for that uh, to get that in there. So in each layer that included, you know, these totals for this measure, I had to include this transform. And it's the same transform in each of the each of the layers. So again, I defined my mark, right? It's a type text. Um, specify my font size. And then I have this encoding, right? So my Y is my island. So there's my islands. And my X is my species. There's my species. And then my text is my X measure formatted as 0.2. And so I did my X measure calculation up here. And so that's what, that's what generates these values right here. So this part of the matrix is defined by this layer right here that we just covered. Um, I don't remember if there was anything else that I wanted to cover in this one. No, we're good. Okay, so let me collapse this layer. So this that took care of this layer. Now, this is another layer, and this is another layer, and then this over here is another layer. So this one right here, let me look. Uh, and let me try to remember which layer this go which layer this goes to calculate some measure text uh i thought it would have been oh yeah here it is so this is height so this layer is this right here that's what i was trying to go for and actually this is its own separate layer um i'll get to that and this is its own separate layer i'll get to that in a minute so what this layer does is this layer defines my totals that i have across here and at the bottom all right 
And so what ha- what you do here is it's the same transformation, right? I define my mark as my text, fire brick and all that. In this case, I specify my Y as being 1.1 times the height. And so that takes the height of the visual and then pushes it down by a certain percentage, by 10% more or less. And so that forms this these three numbers right here because I'm giving it as my X. I give it my species field, so that defines the columns. And then as my text, I just do the sum of the measure. So I'm doing an aggregate across that measure that has been calculated. So I'm actually really summing the rows, um, and that's how I get to 2764.3. Um, so that's how that's done. Now the next one, and again, this is this this is going to cover this these numbers right here. These three numbers right here are defined by this layer. It's the same transformation. In this this case, I give it a mark, and I tell it the x is 1.1 times the width. So that is what takes the width of this visual and pushes it out. And so that defines that. I give it a y encoding. So y encoding right here of my island. And then again, I sum the measure. So I'm actually really summing the columns to get to this number right here. So pretty straightforward. Again, once you start learning this, it becomes really kind of fairly easy to you know, rinse and repeat type stuff. OK, so this one is ta -da -da. and sometimes it would be nice if I could if there I couldn't get commenting to work. Um, maybe I'm probably doing something wrong. Um, but it would be nice if I could have some more comments in here and things like that so I could keep track of what all this is. Um, but by taking a look at this right here, I can tell that this is providing my total for right here. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the same, that same transformation in terms of the aggregate. I define my mark as text, and it's my 1.1 times width and 1.1 times height, so that pushes, pushes it right down to here. And then again, I do my sum of my quantitative X measure, and I return back the total for everything. Because I'm not giving it any kind of Y encoding or X encoding. So it's going to take everything that's, you know, that's being calculated as far as X measure, and it's not going to be slicing or dicing it by anything. So I total it up, then I get that. And that really is, you know, multiple, you know, it actually really does sum up in, a, in all of that fun stuff. Okay, so that is that total. And like I said, I you know, it's probably going to be some people out there that are like, this is like hammering a attack with a sledgehammer. <laughs> so now this piece right here is what defines this total. So this is another layer, and it's pretty simple, right? I just have it 1.1 times the width, um, and I give it a minus 12, and I and I tell it that it's total. And so there you go. Um, oh, that is actually so, <laughs> see. This is actually this total right here. This total right here is this layer right here because it's 1.1 times width. I'm just spitting out the word total. The next one, obviously, is this total label right here where I spit out the total label and I just tell it it's 1.1 times height. Simple enough. All right, so the next one that I have to do is this average body mass, okay? So I just want to add a total row or a column to my table, which is, you know, really difficult in Power BI. You either have to use the, the new hotness uh, out in the quick measure gallery, something along those lines, or you have to, you know, cr drag it into your table and then shrink up your columns. And, and there's there's workarounds for all of it, but they're all pretty ugly uh, versus I just add a new mark and I tell it that my you know Y field is island. So that defines my rows here. And then all I have to do is tell it it's an average of the body mass. So this is actually the average of all the rows. If I wanted to, I could have done a transform and done an average of the averages. Um, but I didn't do that in this case, but I could. Right. So you really have a really a lot of flexibility when it comes to this in terms of how you want your totals to display. And I tell you, you know, so, you know, this is pretty simple, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And so that defines these three values right here. And then I have another layer, which basically is this right here. So again, I'm you know pushing it out as far as the width, and then I'm pushing it down as far as the height, and I'm doing the average. So again, I did an average um, of all of the rows in my data set, not the uh, average of averages. Although, but again, I could have done a transform operation and done average of the averages. Easy enough. Okay, last one. 
um, I need to get this label up here. So again, I have my mark, I do my text, my encoding, and I just give it a value of average body mass and I position it correctly. And that shows up right here. So this visual is actually, cons you know, consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different layers um, in order to create this matrix. But I think think you'll agree that uh, that it comes out. It's pretty nice as far as the overall effect. It's really nice that it's responsive, and I can resize it and resize the whole thing, and I don't get you know crazy, you know, losing or I have to go in here and shrink these things up, and I have to remember to turn off you know. <laughs> word wrap and all of that sort of thing um <clears throat> again yes it's a lot of work uh once you get it but uh you actually can it does allow you to save these as templates um so i'll talk to uh, the enterprise dna folks and maybe i can actually go and i can just export the gen generated json template and we can make that available on the enterprise dna site uh and then you can create your own matrices and not have to start from scratch like i did uh when you're doing it oh and I didn't have to start 100% from scratch. I would be remiss if I did not mention Ben Ferry, uh, the Power BI guy. Um, and he did a YouTube video that was basically matrix, building a matrix in, I need to dismiss that, creating a Deneb matrix. And so the base code for the matrix, um, and he did not have totals in his, um, but uh, I used his uh, Deneb matrix uh, code as the basis for my own code and where I added in all the different layers to get my totals and all of that sort of stuff. So thank you, Ben. Uh, very cool video. I recommend you check out his channel and subscribe if you have not. He does some amazing stuff out there. <clears throat> but that is all I had for this video. Uh, hope it was enjoyable and you learned something about Deneb. Um, and I'll see you all next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.